Coming up on this episode of Freedom From Fire, we'll hear what it takes to keep the city's medical services running during a major event. We'll talk to a new leader committed to fire prevention, and we'll see what you know about fire extinguishers. There's that plus a lot more, so stay tuned to Freedom From Fire. Hello, and welcome to another season of Freedom From Fire. I'm your host, Fire Commissioner Derek Sawyer. Here at Freedom From Fire, we aim to improve your quality of life by giving you fire and life safety information and introducing you to our local safety partners. On today's episode, we're going to explore how the city handles major emergencies as I sit down with the Deputy Commissioner of Emergency Medical Services, Jeremiah Laster. We'll also talk to or with, with the new president of the Citizens for Fire Prevention Committee, Ed Fisher. He'll share what the Citizens for Fire Prevention Committee is doing to help Philadelphians stay safe. But before we get into those discussions, let's look at our community risk reduction programs. Risk reduction programs are geared to educate the public about possible risks and dangers in their home and neighborhoods. We want to prevent emergencies like home fires from occurring. Here are some of the numbers to show where we're at now with regard to saving lives and preventing injuries and property loss. During 2014, the fire department visited over 4,500 homes and installed 8,500 smoke alarms. As of the end of September 2015, the department has visited 3,100 homes and installed over 6,700 smoke alarms. By conducting home visits and installing smoke alarms, we have continued the downward trend of fire fatalities in the city. As of this taping, we have a total of 11 fire fatalities compared to 24 fatalities at this time last year. That's more than a 50% reduction. Prevention and early detection is the key. One of the causes of many of our fires is cooking. In 2014, over 700 fires were caused by cooking. So far this year, there have been close to 650 fires caused by cooking. As a result, we decided that this year we would dedicate our education and prevention outreach initiative, and we would improve or include the emphasis on safety in the kitchen. The city of Philadelphia suffered 32 fire fatalities in 2014. 18 of those fire fatalities were in the 50-year-old range and older. The primary cause for structural fires in the city has been attributed to cooking. In over 900 cases, an improper cooking incident took place. That's three times more than the fire's second cause, which is an open flame. It's important that everyone knows the danger associated with unsafe cooking practices. In order to make the public aware of this hazard, the 2015 fire prevention theme is cooking hazards and danger families, which we say or call CHEF. It is important that everyone understands that unattended cooking could cause a fire for the safety of their family and neighbors. Monitor all cooking activity in the kitchen while preparing meals. Install at least one 10-year lithium battery-powered smoke alarm on each level of your home, near the kitchen, but not in the kitchen. Develop and practice a home escape plan that includes a meeting place outside of the home. Utilize the fire safety checklist to conduct a home inspection to remove potential fire hazards from your home, basement, attic, and garage. Also, take the fire safety pledge found on our Freedom From Fire website. I encourage you to talk to your family, 
about being safe in the kitchen and to practice fire safety every single day. Now, if you've watched the show before, you know that we have the team of students who are constantly trying to make LaSalle University's campus safer. Our new team recently set up set out to kick off the Fire Prevention Month and to see what the LaSalle community knew about fire extinguishers. Test your knowledge and play along. Hello, we are here with Sarah and Lindsay for Freedom From Fire learning about fire extinguishers. So do you guys know anything about a fire extinguisher? Absolutely no. not. <laughs> okay, well let's do a quick little quiz to test your knowledge. So first, typically how many feet should you stand away while putting out a fire? Probably like 10. Yeah, I would say 10. I'm going to say 6 feet. 3 feet. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. You guys are right. 8 to 10 feet is the approximate width. And how many times can you reuse a fire extinguisher? Uh, you can't. Twice? <laughs> you can't. Can you? I don't think so. Is that your final answer? Yeah. You can't reuse a fire extinguisher. You cannot reuse a fire extinguisher. Do you know why? No. You don't know why? Because once it has been used, it needs to be recharged or refilled. Makes sense. It does make sense. It does. How often do you want to get your fire extinguisher inspected? Three times a year. Uh, inspect it? Mm -hmm. Every time you use it? <laughs> no, because you only use it once. <laughs> then you have to inspect it. You got this. Once a year? Annually, and there is a number on the tag of the fire extinguisher which you can call so they can come and inspect it. Pull out your phone and save that number, you should. Okay. <laughs> but you also have to inspect it to see if there's any cracks or anything within the nozzle of it or the tube or the tank, whatever you want to call it, to make sure that it's in great condition, working condition. And there's also an acronym that you want to remember when uh, putting out fires. It's PASS, P-A-S-S. -S. Do you want to take a stab at what uh, the acronyms stand for? Please always safety <laughs> something. Yes. What does PASS stand for? Well, what do you think PASS stands for? I don't know. Well, the P stands for pull the pin. So you pull the pin? Yeah. Where do you pull the pin? Out of the fire extinguisher. Yeah, out of the fire extinguisher. You're good. Can you guess what the A stands for? I'm guessing aim. There you go. Aim. Squeeze. And then what are you going to do after that? Um, spray. Spray or sweep. They're synonyms. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Callie Montana here for Freedom of Fire, and I am with... Firefighter Bird from Engine 51. And today she is going to show us how to operate a fire extinguisher. So, let's see it. All right, well, first and foremost, um, I wouldn't advise anyone to try to put a fire out on their own. Um, if you see a fire, you want to call 911 as soon as possible. And then attempt to, if you can, extinguish it with the fire extinguisher. So, first you want to look at it and, you know, want to make sure it's not damaged, have any cracks or anything on it. Make sure that the date is okay, you know, that it's a workable fire extinguisher. So, like you guys learned, pass, which is pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. You're going to pull the pin, which is right here. You're going to pull that out. Mm -hmm. This is our fire. You're gonna aim at it with this. Well, I don't know if I can take this out. There we go. You're gonna aim at the base. You always aim at the base. You don't aim high at the fire. You wanna aim about eight to 10 feet away. Okay. You don't wanna be too close to the fire because the fire can grow and you can get overwhelmed and not you know, be able to put it out. So then you wanna squeeze and just sweep back and forth. Sweep back and forth. And is that the final step? That is the final step, and then you, you know, like I said, call 911 and make sure that emergency people are coming. Thank you, and that's it on how to f uh, successfully use a fire extinguisher. So now that you ha know how to use a fire extinguisher, do you feel safer? I think I do. I feel a lot safer. And I hope you feel a lot safer now that you know how to properly use a fire extinguisher. Thank you. Do you think you can figure out how to use it now if you were ever in a si situation? I'm pretty sure I learned the the basic parts and I can handle it pretty well. Okay, so do you have any good fire stories for us just to close up the interview? Sarah does. Okay. <laughs> I did set off the smoke detector yesterday. Sorry kids. Doing what? I made a grilled cheese but I, I burnt it <laughs> really bad. It was so smoky. And how did you get the fire extinguisher to turn off? I pressed the off button. 
<laughs> Did the fire department come? No. Do you think they, they should have? No. <laughs> and I'm here with? Tanya Ellis, station manager of LaSalle TV. And we're here to find out um, your fire stories. So what do you have to tell us? Okay. So the first time we had to use a fire extinguisher that I remember uh, was in high school and it was in this honors class so they did like really creative things and, and it was this group who was doing some kind of thing where they were witches and they actually brought in a big pot and put alcohol in it and it had a flame so it was like <laughs> the witch's cauldron and I don't know why the teacher thought that this would be allowed anyway in a school. And so the students weren't too smart, even though they were in honors. And they kept pouring more alcohol in, which meant the flame was getting higher and higher to the point where it, it was like this big in the middle of a classroom and set off the fire alarms in the entire school, wow. uh, which we knew was a bad idea because it was lunchtime, so this wasn't a drill. <laughs> uh, but one of the students was calm and went out and got the fire extinguisher and calmly put it all out before the fire department even got there. So you have to know P-A-S-S -S for putting out a fire. It's good you were in an honors class and someone knew something about yeah. fire extinguishers. <laughs> so have you ever used a fire extinguisher? I have not. So. But now you know how to. Now I know. Because okay. of you. Because of, you. because of me. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. And I think that's all. <laughs> Thanks for that information. As you know, this past September, Philadelphia hosted the World Meeting of Families, along with a Pope visit to the U.S. by Pope Francis. This was a huge undertaking and required many hours of planning from numerous agencies. I would like to acknowledge some of those partners during this historic papal visit. The Philadelphia Department of Public Health and the Medical Reserve Corps. The Philadelphia Medical Reserve Corps is a committed group of volunteers with and without medical background who keep Philadelphia safe by responding to public health emergencies. The American Red Cross, specifically the Disaster Relief Team the Pennsylvania Department of Health, along with the state medical assistance teams, the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency, PEMA, and the Office of Emergency Management. On the federal level, Health and Human Services, specifically the disaster medical teams who assisted with the event, all Philadelphia regional hospitals surged their staffing for increased capacity. A great amount of the effort and collaboration took place to make sure the city was prepared for the thousands of visitors who came. Just to give you an idea of the magnitude of this event, here is a look at some of the numbers. We had 100 ambulances ready for use. 200 automatic external defibrillators or AEDs were in place if needed. 100 gators, which are all terrain vehicles, were staffed by paramedics and emergency medical technicians. Paramedics and emergency medical technicians staffed 50 bikes throughout the area. We had 50 foot patrols, which included emergency medical technicians who were assigned to intersections and other areas as needed to walk around the event. There were 10 medical and first aid stations throughout the area. We had healthcare professionals available, which included physicians, registered nurses, EMTs, paramedics, and behavioral health staff. There was also a setup to help a lot of a lost persons to find their groups. In addition to all these units and the people, two ambulance buses were available. These buses were retrofitted and to be qualified as ambulances and were, were each capable of accommodating at least 20 patients. During peak event periods, there were over 1,000 total personnel assigned to medical care and logistics. EMS responded to over 400 incidents and transported about 130 patients to hospitals. Now joining us to discuss the Philadelphia Fire Department's role during the Pope visit and to provide an update on emergency medical services is Deputy Commissioner of Emergency Medical Services, Jeremiah Laster. Welcome back to the show. Good. Pleasure being here again. Good. How you been? Been great so far now that the uh, Pope Francis has left the city. We can uh, all breathe a sigh of relief somewhat. Right, in so, terms of planning. So tell us what's been going on since last year when you won the show. Well, since last year, we were able to uh, have 220 fire service EMTs uh, graduate from the Philadelphia Fire Academy. All of those EMTs are currently uh, partner with 
uh, paramedics in an ALS unit or with another FSE, fire service EMT in a BLS unit. They're currently all working in the field. Right. Um, and also we've been working with community risk reduction uh, to continue to address super users such as institutions and individuals. We just had a meeting with uh, Jefferson Hospital about telemedicine and how we're going to be able to work with healthcare professionals, hospitals, and insurers to make sure that we could uh, go out into the field and address some of these chronic medical uh, users, users of 911, before they need to be transported to a hospital. So that's going to greatly assist and hopefully reduce some of the responses we have to uh, make on an emergency basis. So 200 EMTs, how difficult was that to integrate them into the system? Well, it was a team effort, as you know. Yourself, uh, Deputy Commissioner Schweitzer, it was a whole team effort of everybody, getting people processed in, getting up to the uh, fire academy with uh, Executive Chief Stallings, getting them through the whole process, lots of paperwork, getting them to do their ride along, right. being successful in the program, being precepted by paramedics, and getting them assimilated into uh, the system where they can feel comfortable and do what hopefully they enjoy doing. I met with quite a few of them and they were very excited about the job. They're being an asset to the fire department in terms of team, consistent team building for EMS providers so they can have a steady partner. It's going to, uh, EMTs are going to allow us to expand our system uh, as early as November. Right. So we can uh, expand our hours of operation for some medic units. So share with the viewers why was it important to integrate EMTs into our, our system? Well, one of the things where we were somewhat short, shortage of paramedics, so right. we had to bring in some EMTs. The state of Pennsylvania uh, designates an ALS medic unit as one paramedic and one EMT. So we decided to take that approach so that we could uh, better utilize all our resources, especially the paramedics. And also, we're going to be looking to make uh, our system in 2016 all ALS uh, system, That'd staff with one paramedic and one EMT. So what do we have to look forward to in 2016? We're in October, a couple of months and we'll be in January. What do we have to look forward to? Two things, again, all, all paramedic, all medic units in the City of Philadelphia Fire Department will be staffed with one paramedic and one fire service EMT. That's gonna raise a level of service so that now, instead of sending a BLS unit to a call that may require an ALS intervention, they're gonna have that capacity to do that. So it's gonna raise a level of care for all the citizens uh, in the city of Philadelphia. We're also looking at expanding community risk reduction in terms of adding some personnel so we could uh, work towards developing a community paramedicine program. That program is really designed to try to go out into the community, paramedics in specially designed uh, vehicles, special training, and go out and meet with and respond to calls for people who have chronic medical problems before they uh, call 911. It's going to be. Uh, it's going to fit right into the Affordable Care Act. Right. Uh, insurance uh, providers and hospitals and other healthcare healthcare professionals are going to be on board. Uh, we're also looking forward to using telemedicine, where you can actually take a computer mm -hmm. out, and the paramedic can assess the patient and allow a physician to provide uh, some intervention and direction as to the care that they're going to receive. Great. So let's talk about the Pope visit. Oh yes, let's talk about so, the Pope. So. The planning process, tell us, tell us about the planning process and how long that took. Well, initially, as you know, we started probably the latter part of 2014 with right. our first meetings with the city. We really started to gear up in January of 2015. And uh, a lot of committees were established. One of the big uh, committees was the Health and Medical Committee, mm -hmm. which I was a chair along with somebody from uh, uh, Office of Emergency Medicine, and, I mean Office of Emergency Management, as well as the Secret Service. And we were tasked with putting together a plan that took in consideration all as aspects of health, public health, hospitals, even veterinary care for some service animals that were on scene, food safety, food defense, and of course, emergency medical services. It was a daunting task. We had probably about 30 people on our committee. Uh, at the end, though, everybody, it wasn't one single person, everybody came together as a team and it came together and we were able to write up a plan and provide all the necessary uh, people right, to make sure right. that uh, the event was successful. So when planning for such a large event, what are some of the things that you have to take into consideration? One of the big things, as you know, again, we were talking about millions of people perhaps coming to the city. Right. So we took that number and said, it's gonna be a big event. 
So the size was a, a consideration as well as the type of event. We knew that this was gonna be more of a pilgrimage and a religious event. So we weren't worried about, you know, typical the things that you see at a, a concert or a big party on a parkway. Right. This was gonna be sort of a pilgrimage and a religious event. So that helped us out tremendously. Right. But with that, the type of people who were gonna come and participate, which was gonna be senior citizens, middle-aged persons, youth, it, it ran the gamut of everybody. Gotcha. So we had to make sure that we had uh, provided access could get access to those people because of the large crowds. That's why we use those uh, resources you just uh, 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 stated, which were bicycles, gators, ambulances, foot patrol, right. AEDs, medical equipment, all the medical tents. We wanted to make sure people had access to water. Mm -hmm. uh, well, what I, from what I've seen, you're doing a great job. So I want to thank you for joining us today and uh, pass it on to the members. They did an excellent job. Yes, sir. Thank We're you. going to take a quick break. And when we return, we'll talk with the president of the Citizens for Fire Prevention Committee. Stay with us. My name is Caitlin. I'm six years old. I like to go to the beach with my cousins. When I was a baby, I was very sick. And then I got a liver transplant from my organ donor. He saved my life. This gift of life was made possible by an organ donor. Imagine what you could make possible. Sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. When you're dying, what will it be like? You think you may know, until you see what hospice can do. Expert loving care that enables more cherished moments, more smiles, maybe one more dance. Turns out when you're dying, there's more living to do. These families discovered what hospice is. See what's possible at momentsoflife.org. Welcome back to Freedom From Fire. I'm your host, Fire Commissioner Derek Sawyer. Now joining us is Ed Fisher, the new president of the Citizens for Fire Prevention Committee. Welcome to Freedom From Fire. Thank you, it's great to be here. Thanks for coming, so how are you making out? Excellent, I'm, I'm very excited about uh, the partnership with the fire department and uh, so yeah. So share with us some of your background. Um, I've, my skill set is fundraising. I'm a professional beggar, so to speak. Great, we need uh, money. <laughs> there you go. I got started in the 70s, going way back at a third world country in Guatemala after an earthquake. And ever since then, I've worked at universities, at hospitals, and, and in low income communities raising funds. So I've, I've worked for a lot of different nonprofits. And right now I'm working with the Citizens for Fire Prevention and the, and the Philadelphia Fire Department. And I'm, I'm excited about saving lives. Great, that's, that's a perfect fix. So let everyone know what is the Citizens for Fire Prevention Committee and why are they important? Sure. Uh, we're the nonprofit partner for the Philadelphia Fire Department. Our role is, it's sort of, it's a partnership. I see the fire department as the big brother, the big sister, and, and the citizens committee as a little brother, a little sister. And our role is, is, is to help the fire department expand its impact, to expand mm -hmm. what it's doing, get more smoke alarms in the field, help the fire department educate more people by fundraising, by creating those public-private partnerships that can help these exciting things happen. Right. And that's very important, I think, because a lot of times the partnerships can help us do some of the things that we can't afford to do. So what are some of the things you have achieved so far and what's in the future? Sure. And when I speak we, I'm talking about the big we because it's the fire department that's doing the lion's share right, of the work. Right. Your, your guys and women and are, are the people going door to door to install the smoke alarms. Mm -hmm. They're the ones educating people in the community groups. In, in the schools and the daycare centers and at the special events. But we're helping raise those money. We're helping print that educational material. We're helping get that website out there or get that app for the cell phone mm -hmm. by, by raising funds. And, and uh, we, uh, the Citizens is comprised of three different groups. We have members, we have our board of directors, and we have our advisory board. And so 
we, we have people with experience, former firefighters, people that worked in the Philadelphia Fire Department or other fire departments, right. uh, teachers, people that will help us educate the better in the schools. And so, so that partnership, I think, brings money, but also, you know, it, it, you know, it help. So. so how can the community help and how does the Fittest Citizens for Fire Prevention Committee benefit the community? Sure. Well, number one um, is the city's 311 phone line. If people need a smoke alarm, call 311 to get, get the smoke alarms installed by the fire department. Um, also, if you want to donate uh, or if you want to volunteer, you can either go to the Philadelphia Fire Department's website or to the citizens. The Philadelphia Fire Department's is philagovernor slash fire. Right. Um, and the citizens is www.freedomfromfire.com. And you can donate online. You can sign up to volunteer, uh, or you can get uh, smoke alarms online. So what was your first thought when, when you were approached to become the president? Did you think that it was going to be a challenge, or what were some of your first thoughts? It, it was scary because of the, of the volume of work. I right. mean, you know, saving lives is something you, you don't important. take lightly. Right. You know, you, you, don't, you, you want to do, uh, give 100% and, and do an excellent job, just like the fire department's been doing. I mean, the numbers are phenomenal this year. They're down significantly because we in part because we were able to raise more exactly. money and in part because your your team's working harder and smarter and and doing a great job so so we really thank you for taking on that challenge because without your support and your skill set we would have a difficult time raising the money for the citizens so before you go i have a favor to ask and that yeah. is to take the fire safety pledge i'd be honored you'd be honored all right, so let's raise our right hand and get ready for this pledge. You ready? I'm ready. I love my family. And, and I'm responsible, responsible for, their, for safety. their safety. Therefore, Therefore I, pledge I pledge the following. The following. I, I pledge to have, to have at least one working smoke, smoke alarm on each level of my home. home. I, I pledge to test my alarms as recommended and replace my alarms with new lithium battery power alarms when needed. I pledge, I pledge that, that every family, family member will sleep with their bedroom door closed. I pledge to develop and practice a home escape plan. plan. I pledge that, that if I cannot afford smoke alarms, alarms I will call the non-emergency number 311 or visit www.phila.gov slash 311. All of this I do solemnly pledge. Thank you again for joining us, Ed. I urge you to take the pledge at home with your family. October is Fire Prevention Month, so it's a great time to look at how you and your family have prepared for a fire emergency. If you haven't already done so, go to freedomfromfire.com to review our fire safety checklist and make a home escape plan. You'll be just in time for our upcoming event. Thursday, October the 8th, is the citywide fire drill. The annual citywide home fire drill focuses on the importance of not only developing a home escape plan, but practicing it as well. Installing smoke alarms on each level of your home and having a home escape plan will improve your family's chances of surviving a home fire. Remember, if you would like to find out more about LaSalle TV, you can check out our social media sites. And if you are interested in learning about the Philadelphia Fire Department, visit our Facebook, Twitter, and web pages. I would like to once again thank Deputy Commissioner Jeremiah Laster and Ed Fisher for joining us today. I also would like to thank you for tuning in and watching. So until next time, remember, fire is everyone's fight. Stay safe and remain free from fire.